Here's Mountain Dew Zero. I am thirsty. Huh? No, life isn't always fair, and all good things must come to an end eventually. And that's the case for these top 15 discontinued soda drinks we all miss. No, God! Orbits. This is not soda. Think, Jane. Think. Not a carbonated drink per se, but still a very iconic and beloved drink nonetheless, Orbitz was synonymous with the 1990s. The Drink with Bowls was created by the Clearly Food and Beverage Company and was described as a texturally enhanced alternative beverage. The bowls would stay in place with the use of gelling gum, which is meant to mimic the connective abilities of a spider web. While the line did have some enticing flavors like pineapple, banana, cherry, coconut, Orbitz was discontinued not even a year after being first introduced to the market. Why? Maybe because it resembled something you would find in the home decor section at Target. Is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. Or maybe because the trend passed and a fruit-flavored liquid with flavorless balls mixed in wasn't so appealing anymore. Regardless, seeing this unique drink make a comeback would certainly be a sight for sore eyes. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Mountain Dew Ultraviolet. I think the ultraviolet scanning light will be the judge of that. Over the years, Mountain Dew has released an impressive amount of flavors, some delicious and some rather questionable. Ultraviolet somehow fell under both categories. It combined the climate classic, refreshing citrus flavor of Mountain Dew with mixed berries and had a soft lavender color. To be honest, the only thing questionable about this soda was the name, mostly because it sounds like you might be drinking something radioactive. That doesn't sound right. The great thing about Ultraviolet Mountain Dew was its lack of calories, as it was the first of the company's drinks to be available only in diet form. People who were lucky enough to try this fruity, fizzy beverage said it tasted almost identical to Mountain Dew Revolution another wild berry soda. But sadly, it was only available for two limited runs around 2010 and was never seen again. Maybe one day Ultraviolet will rise again. 35, maybe 40 years, if we're lucky. Just a soda. Mmm, that must be the sugar. Oh God, that's good. Can you believe that there once was a time when energy drinks didn't exist? You wanted energy? You'd just drink endless pots of coffee until you felt ready to go. Mom, I need another energy drink! Thankfully, Josta came to the rescue and became the first energy drink introduced by a major U.S. beverage company, PepsiCo. Josta was a fruity soft drink marketed as a high-energy drink released in the late 1990s that contained both gobs of caffeine and guarana, a plant whose seeds contain around four times the amount of caffeine found in coffee beans. Was it ahead of its time? Most likely, since the drink was discontinued after only a few years. Today, with energy drinks on the rise, Josta still has a pretty considerable amount of fans who keep on creating online petitions to bring the panther back. But so far, it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Gotta stay optimistic, you know? Lifesaver Soda. Candy! Candy! Let's be honest, having your favorite candy turned into a drink is every little kid's wildest dream. Back in the 1980s, boys and girls were graced with Lifesaver Soda, an extremely fruity explosive beverage that was pretty much a candy in a can. No superpowers at all. I have both type 1 and 2 diabetes. Ow! However, even though the drink fared pretty well in taste tests and looked like it had a promising future, it was discontinued shortly after its release. Let's just say customers didn't seem to agree with just how dynamic the soda was. Apparently, people weren't able to separate the brand from its hard candy form and had the impression of drinking liquid candy. And while that doesn't sound like such a bad thing, it tanked once it reached the stores. How sad is that? Fruitopia. I wanted to see your utopia. But now I see it as more of a fruit topia. Fruit topia was an all time favorite for every tween and teen in the 1990s. Often called a Snapple knockoff, the sugary, fruity drink gathered quite the following over the years, but that didn't stop it from getting discontinued in the majority of the markets. Why? Yes, you can still get your hands on some in countries like Canada and Australia, and in very limited locations in the United States, but its popularity went down drastically. With funky flavors, Flavor names like Total Fruit Integration, Citrus Consciousness, and Strawberry Passion Awareness, Fruitopia really had everything going for it to succeed. 
In the U.S., the success was rather short-lived. Sales began to drop, and by 2003, it had almost completely vanished. So if you want to taste Fruitopia, all you need to do is take a little road trip. It'll be like a trip back in time. Let's roll. Coca-Cola C2 you sure there's no rum in that Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola C2 was basically destined to fail from the beginning, but it was still fun to see it trying to earn its permanent spot on the shelves. However, its failure had nothing to do with the taste. It was actually pretty decent and was a little healthier than regular Coke. That's interesting. That's very interesting. No, it failed because of its marketing. Coca-Cola spent over $50 million on an advertising campaign targeting men ages 20 to 40 who normally wouldn't drink a diet soda because of the fear that it would be perceived as too feminine. Told you it was doomed from the start. Men were simply not interested because it wasn't appealing enough, Then anyone else could already opt for zero-calorie diet Coke. So Coca-Cola C2 eventually failed. Thank you for your service. Hubba Bubba Soda. Did you ever chew a piece of sweet bubble gum and think, huh, that would make such a good drink? Okay, probably not, but that didn't stop Hubba Bubba from taking a very bold and very sweet step. They came out with a Hubba Bubba bubble gum soda, and yes, it was as sugary as it sounds. It was created by film producer Steve Roeder in 1987 using a snow cone flavoring, meaning you can already pretty much imagine how it would cause cavities within seconds. But despite Despite its extreme sugary properties, Hubba Bubba Soda was still fairly enticing. It had dynamic packaging and a soothing baby pink color, which, when mixed together, was more than aesthetically pleasing. Not bad. Not bad. Even though it sounds like a sugar crash waiting to happen, Hubba Bubba Soda was definitely an interesting concept. There's no denying that. It is the best. Red Fusion. Jim Carter. The fusion of gymnastics and karate. In the early 2000s, history was made when Red Fusion was released, becoming the first new flavor Dr. Pepper ever added since its creation 120 years prior. But perhaps this should have been a lesson that when you have a good thing going, don't try to mess with it. Think about it. Red Fusion was predominantly red cherry flavored, contrary to the traditional black cherry flavor the original soda delivers. Sadly, it failed spectacularly, despite the strong marketing and high hopes. Dr. Pepper stopped producing Red Fusion less than a year after it launched, and the company went right back to focusing on its one and only soda. Years passed, and you can now enjoy other types of Dr. Pepper, maybe all thanks to Red Fusion's failure. It's for the best. Pepsi, Fire and Dice. Fireball! Cut! In 2004, PepsiCo spent millions on the promotion for their two newest products, Fire Pepsi and Ice Pepsi. Pepsi Fire was a spicy, hot, cinnamon-flavored drink, while Pepsi Ice was the complete opposite, a cool blue minty drink. The original idea behind the concept showed a lot of promise. It was basically taking a choose-your-own-adventure approach when grabbing a drink. Ah, very nice. By doing so, you could choose the soda you wanted based on your mood. Unfortunately, that choice was quickly taken away from us when both flavors were discontinued the year after. Pepsi Fire did make a brief comeback in the summer of 2017, but its frosty compadre did not join the fun. Maybe next time, Deshaun. Cactus Cooler. Cool, go, 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 no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Not only does Cactus Cooler have a killer name, but it also tastes pretty incredible. Before you freak out, don't worry, it's still possible to find this Fred Flintstone-inspired drink in very small markets in California and the southwestern part of the United States. But you better get ready to do some looking. Cactus Cooler has notes of orange and pineapple, which pair nicely with the slightly sweet carbonation. The reason why this gem of a soda was mostly discontinued isn't all that clear, but it may have something to do with how pineapple-flavored drinks aren't usually a big hit with the majority of people. Yeah, maybe. Recognizable by its familiar orange, yellow, and green label with saguaro cacti, Cactus Cooler deserves to be enjoyed all around the world if people just gave it a chance. One chance. Patio. 
It's diet, dude. Diet soda doesn't give you diarrhea. With a name reminiscent of sitting in a deck chair in the shade with a drink in your hand on a warm summer's day, Patio was first introduced in the early 1960s. It was Pepsi's first diet drink to enter the market, just in time to compete with the first ever diet cola, Diet Right. It was marketed as an alternative soda for diabetics and was targeted to women in particular, focusing on the low calories aspect. I'm gonna use low fat ingredients. Game changer. Patio highly impacted the whole diet culture. Eventually, Patio was phased out and the name was switched to Diet Pepsi to be advertised alongside the main brand. How times have changed. If you want zero calorie water, try Diet Water Zero Light. Crystal Pepsi. All the great taste of regular Pepsi, but without that troublesome opacity. Okay, there's no real argument on this one. Crystal Pepsi was definitely weird. That, however, doesn't take away from the fact that it was also innovative and trying to go with the flow of the times. Emerging in the early 1990s, Crystal Pepsi was hoping to hop on the popularity of pure products with a transparent, caffeine-free version of their usually dark brown soda. Pepsi was basically going after health-conscious consumers who would see Crystal Pepsi as a new new, healthier, pure, and natural alternative. But the only problem was, it was filled with high fructose corn syrup, which defeats the whole purpose. You had one job. So even after spending over $40 million on marketing, the Crystal Pepsi message didn't translate the way the company had hoped, and it was eventually discontinued after only a few years. Even today, the clear soda is still considered one of Pepsi's biggest faux pas, and is often seen as the perfect example of a failed product. As we keep moving on, take a second to hit that like button, would ya? Thank you. Next! Okay, soda. Okay. Those who were young in the 1990s will remember the whole counterculture that was on full display. OK Soda was basically Coca-Cola's attempt at marketing an anti-Coke for all of the rebellious, anti-corporate pseudo-hipsters looking for a new purpose in life. With taglines like, what's the point of OK? Well, what's the point of anything? OK Soda might very well have been ahead of its time. Millennial nihilism, anyone? Plus, with a unique and fruity flavor and a hint of spice. <laughs> Yeah, boy. It definitely had a lot to offer taste-wise. Introduced in 1993 and discontinued in 1995, OK Soda didn't have enough time to shine. And perhaps a return to the shelves is exactly what we all need. OK, let's give it a try. Coca-Cola Black. Would you be requiring a cold beverage while you're here? I'd love some coffee. Coca-Cola really said rise and shine when it introduced this ultra-energetic, one-of-a-kind soda, Coca-Cola Black. First introduced in 2006, Coca-Cola Black was the best of both worlds as it mixed soda and coffee to create the ultimate morning beverage. Do you normally take coffee with your sugar? What? Of course, Coca-Cola already contained an impressive amount of caffeine, but by adding the coffee, the company was hoping to attract the discerning palates of people in their 20s and 30s looking for a pick-me-up at any point in the day. But the product was pulled from the shelves after only 17 months, which means that something went wrong. Indeed, years later, a Coca-Cola executive said that Black had failed because it was a trend before its time, even though nowadays many other soda companies are hopping on the soda slash coffee bandwagon, there's no telling if a Coca-Cola Black reissue would see any success. But still, we'd like a chance to find out. Indeed. Indeed. Tab clear. Give me, give me a tab. Tab? I can't give you a tab unless you order something. The rivalry between Pepsi and Coca-Cola never seems to die down and only gets even more competitive as the years go by. So, of course, when Pepsi came out with a new revolutionary clear soda, Coca-Cola could simply not let that slide and had to come up with their own version. Tap Clear was launched right after Crystal Pepsi and had the same exact intent, be a full-flavored cola but without the dark tint. I see what you did there. Good one. Apparently, Tab Clear was never meant to be a raging success. Instead, its sole purpose was to derail the release of Crystal Pepsi and blur the lines to confuse customers. Well, whether it was sabotage or a true push at success, both products ended up failing miserably. Yikes, that's a recipe for disappointment. Get a taste of more great videos. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad. And hey, leave us a comment. Comment.